Hi, I'm Canis, and I live in a narrowboat. I have done so for nearly six years and have enjoyed cruising the canals of the United Kingdom. My narrowboat is 57 feet long and 6 foot 10 inches wide. However, every time I'd see a Dutch barge, I'd say to myself, I want one. So for most of 2018, I searched for a Dutch barge to buy and found one, only to discover, after I paid £575 for a survey, that the hull was rotten. The name of that boat was Jolly Water. Of course it was. In January 2019, late at night, I was on the internet again, searching for more Dutch barges to buy. The problem was, I was looking at boats in the UK and couldn't find one within my budget and to specifications I required. But then I ventured down an internet rabbit hole of boat brokerages based in the Netherlands, where I discovered De Vrouw Linda, the Lady Linda. The principal reason I was struggling to find a suitable Dutch barge was simple. I had no money, and I'm Irish. Being Irish meant that if I was going to cruise the canals of Ireland, the boat could be no longer than 18.5 metres, and no wider than 3.9 metres. Having no money meant my choices were severely limited. However, borrowing money is another matter. De Vrouw Linda was advertised at 35,000 euros and came in at 17.65 meters long and 3.65 meters wide. The boat was built in 1910 by the boat builder Dirk Boots. His surname is Dutch for boat. Boots shipyard was in Gauslus a district beside Alphen Adarin in South Holland. Apologies to the Dutch. That's for my pronunciation, of course. The Boots shipyard is long gone now, but you would have found it at the junction of the Ark Canal and the Oud Rin, almost exactly halfway between Amsterdam and Rotterdam. From 1910 to 1930, the boat was under sail, but then that changed in 1930 when the sails, the mast, and lee boards were removed and replaced by a single cylinder, 14 horsepower, chrome out, hot bulb diesel engine. Although this engine wasn't strictly limited to burning diesel. A chrome out engine is similar to a Bollander engine as it requires some form of blowtorch to heat the combustion chamber before you can start it. Now, from this point onwards, the boat moved aggregate, which included sand, gravel, rocks and seashells, the latter used in the manufacture of lime, not the fruit. During World War II, the Netherlands was occupied by Nazi forces, and in 1943, the boat was confiscated from its Jewish owner and sold. Skipper Geis Bozeman acquired the boat at this time, and it continued to operate into the 1960s, but by this point canals and their boats had got a lot bigger, so its tiny 45 ton payload was no longer profitable. However, due to its tiny 90 centimeter draft, it found a new function transporting rubble from Amsterdam out into the shallow polders being reclaimed at the time. But with the advent of containerization in 1964, its 54 years of service were over and the scrapyard beckoned. Step in, Chris Cable. In 1964, with money borrowed from his mother, mothers are the best, Chris bought the boat at scrap value from Mr. Boseman and proceeded to turn the rusty bucket into a summer leisure craft. Chris, with little money, got creative. He acquired a 12 meter long bus from a scrapyard, chopped the roof off and lowered it into the hold, providing a cabin. 
summertime holidays were now sorted. Ten years later, by 1975, he had turned the boat into what it is today. The bus was gone, and the boat had a new cabin, a new DAF 475 six-cylinder diesel engine, and more importantly, the boat got a new 16-meter mast and was rigged again for sailing. The boat, by this stage, was named De Vrouw Linda, after the cable's daughter, Linda, and was used for sailing the lakes and seas of the Netherlands, the North Sea, and up into the Baltic Sea. In 1910, when the boat was built, there was a pavilion cabin at the very back for the family to live in, giving this style of boat a name, Pavilion Jock. This was a tiny space for a family to live on. The same can be seen on traditional narrowboats on the canals of Britain. So this was your business and your home. This arrangement continues today in Europe, but the boats are much bigger and have car parking on the boat. What's truly remarkable is that despite the varied life this boat has had, the original pavilion cabin is still in situ. It's at the back of the boat, 110 years later. That's the original woodwork. Now, a question remained. I had found the boat advertised. Would it be the boat for me when I see it in the flesh? Well, let's find out in the next video.